and I was so involved in the in the campaign at that time, and I had all these lists of people who were going to donate at this meeting at Dr. Criswell's house. So I was going to go up there and just give them this information and just get away from there. But before I could, they came through the kitchen area, and I saw her, somebody in the kitchen, pointing to me. But before that happened, the man, uh, Chuck Watts was his name, he was the local pharmacist. He was the one that drove them from the airport to the Criswell's home. And he came over to me and he said, you know, the whole topic of conversation all the way from the Fort Smith airport to here was you. And that, I didn't get to say, well, what? You know, what, what on earth? And because she walked over just about that time. And she stood there and she looked at me and she said, I just want you to know how uh, happy we are for all the things that you do for Bill and uh, in this campaign. And I just sort of nodded and was going to turn away. And she grabbed a hold of my arm and my hand at the same time. And she pulls me into her. And this smile fades to this very harsh expression. And she said, do you understand everything you do? And I could have fainted. I mean, I get cold chills now, just, just remembering it. And uh, I took my hand from hers and I left. What, and, but what, what did she mean? I think she meant that she knew what had happened. I honestly believe he went back to her that day and said, well, I messed up this time. You know, having affairs and things, that's, that's bad enough. But I think he went back to her and said, I really messed up this time. And that was her way of saying, we know, I know, and you better stay quiet. I mean, I couldn't take it as anything else, and which I did. How would you describe her? Uh, very cold. Even when she came over to greet me, there's a, there was just a coldness. She had this smile on her face, but it was very, um, it was, I'm sorry. You know, even after all this time. It was so cold, you know. But then the second expression was frightening, you know. Here she is, and she's standing below me, looking up at me, and and saying these very, very frightening things. When she was approaching you, as she was talking to you, when she grabbed your hand, what was going through your head at that time? Couldn't believe it. Could not believe that she came into that function and came straight to me. I mean, there was nobody that she went to before, except it looked like to ask where I was. And if I was there, I guess. Uh, it was, my heart started really pumping. My heart started beating real fast when, uh, when she started walking toward me and I was trying to figure out a way to get out, but I couldn't. She was between me and the door. And so, I just tried to relax uh, as she came over to me. But then after she changed her tone and grabbed my hand, uh, I just wanted to get out of there. It scared the heck out of me. She, all she did was let me know she knew. That's, and that I'd better stay quiet. That's, that's, that's the essence of what I got out of that. And how has that confrontation affected the rest of your life since that day? I've kept quiet up until probably 98. 